The Death Birds. These mean avians can be found throughout the lands between, appearing near graveyards at night, to swat any would-be elder lords that dare approach their hallowed grounds. But the Death Birds hide a secret, as they still serve a power that opposes the very rule of the Elden Ring itself. But to understand the Death Birds and their master, we first have to explore the cycle of life and death in the lands between. Starting with this, the legendary Erd Tree stands ever tall, overshadowing the entirety of the lands between. This great tree of golden light stands as a living symbol of not only the Golden Order, but the Greater Will itself. Yet, despite its golden sheen, the origins of the Erd Tree is darker than you'd think at first glance, because the rule of the Erd Tree is not eternal. It had a beginning, and possibly an end, depending on the ending you choose. But then, how did the Erd Tree come to be? Well, the Erd Tree came to be when the outer god of order, the Greater Will, sent its vassal, the Elden Beast, to the lands between. Not long after, the Elden Beast found a champion to spread the influence of the Greater Will. A Numen woman, Marika, was chosen, and when joined together, the Elden Beast became the Elden Ring and fused with Marika, who became known as the Eternal Queen. It has not been mentioned how the Erd Tree technically came to be, but logically speaking, Marika most likely planted a small seed, which then grew to the mountainous tree we see today. But for what reason was the Erd Tree planted at all? Well, that's where the dark side of its creation comes to light. You see, the Erd Tree is not only a symbol of Marika's power. It is also the very thing that controls the aforementioned cycle of life in the lands between. When the Erd Tree was first planted, it seems to have grown from the power of the Crucible of Life itself. The incantations called Aspect of the Crucible all say this. This is a manifestation of the Earth Tree's primal vital energies, an aspect of the primordial crucible, where all life was once blended together. And the Crucible Knight's armor says this, holds the power of the Crucible of Life, the primordial form of the Earth Tree. While these texts seem to conflict with each other, I would assume that this is because of a mistranslation. But as we can assume that the Erd Tree was once a seed, it would be logical to also assume that Marika planted this very seed in the so-called Crucible, from which all life originates in the Lands Between. As you can imagine, the Crucible being the source of all life in the Lands Between points to one very important fact. The Elden Ring's power, and in essence the power and the spread of influence of the Greater Will, would logically have been amplified by the life energies of the very planet itself as the Earth Tree grew from the incredibly potent Crucible of Life. The Earth Tree cycle of life is further explored by the Seedbed Curse, which reads, Curse grown on a corpse killed and defiled by the Dung Eater, a tender pox afflicted with omen horns. The Dung Eater cultivates the Seedbed Curse on corpses. By doing so, he prevents dead souls returning to the Earth Tree, leaving them forever cursed. All of this very strongly points to that the Greater Will, an outer god is also, in essence, a parasite. A parasite that absorbs the life energies of the lands between, and spreads its influence through Marika and the Golden Order. And this is where the Deathbirds and their master comes in. You see, before the Greater Will had sent the Elden Beast to the lands between, the cycle of life seems to have worked in a slightly different way. We can see this through various items related to the Deathbirds. The primary item that states this is the explosive ghost flame spell, which says, Sorcery of the Servants of Death. Strike the ground with the staff, triggering an explosion of ghost flame that burns the surrounding area. In the time when there was no Erd Tree, death was burned in ghost flame. Death birds were the keepers of that fire. Another item, the Death's Poker, reads, the birds are graveyard fire keepers. It is said they rake out the ashen remains of the dead from their kilns. And the Death's Poker speaks of a direct connection with the spell Ancient Death Rancor, which reads, Summons a horde of vengeful spirits that chase down foes. They are cinders of the ancient death hex, raked from the fires of ghost flame by death birds. So all of this tells us that the death birds used ghost flame to burn the bodies of the dead and raked out their souls, possibly to make sure that the cycle of rebirth could keep going. 
Which brings us to the one in charge of the death birds themselves, the twin bird. The twin bird kite shield reads, shield featuring a vividly painted twin bird. The twin bird is said to be the envoy of an outer god, and mother of the death birds. Now this description spells it out for us. There is another outer god which, despite remaining unnamed, seemed to have controlled life and death long before the greater will held the lands between. And as we look at the twin bird shield itself, we can clearly see the mother of all the death birds itself, reminiscent of a phoenix, the bird of legend that is born from its own ashes after death. The shield also mentions that the twin bird was an envoy, which is what the Elden Beast is to the greater will. Two talismans that seem to relate to the actual twin bird are the blue feathered branch sword and the red feathered branch sword. The red one states, a talisman adorned with red feathers, once used in ancient death rituals. The heart sings when one draws close to death, and a glorious end awaits those who cling so tenaciously to life. And the blue one states, the heart sings when one draws close to death, and thus does one cling so tenaciously to life to render up a death worth offering. These talismans grant a bonus to your survivability, the blue one, and your damage dealt, the red one, when your health reaches dangerously low levels. What this means relating to the twin bird can only be speculated at, but these talismans seem to suggest that individuals who cling desperately to life were to be rewarded after they died. What this reward would be is unknown as of now, but chances are that the reward would be actual rebirth. There is another item description that points towards this outer god being the god of death and battle, and that is the greatsword, Helfen Steeple, which says, Greatsword patterned after the black steeple of the Helfen, the lampwood which guides the dead of the spirit world. The lamplight is similar to grace in appearance, only it is said that it can only be seen by those who met their death in battle. This description suggests that just like the grace guides us through the lands between, there exists something similar called the Helfen, which can only be seen by the dead and only by those who died fighting, which mirrors us in a way, the tarnished, being grace given, as not all characters can see grace in Elden Ring. Now finally, we have the sacrificial axe, which gives some more insight into the god of death itself. Hatchet used in ancient sacrificial rite. A deathbird is depicted as a malevolent deity. The power of the right yet lingers. A small amount of FP is restored upon slaying a foe. This description seems to suggest that while deathbirds were important to the cycle of rebirth, the outer god that they served was possibly just as parasitic as the greater will since the deathbirds are described as malevolent. The fact that the axe also steals FP upon defeating foes is reminiscent of the death's poker description which stated that it was used to rake out the remains, possibly meaning the souls of the dead. Now putting two and two together, my own conclusion is that the outer gods are indeed parasitic. Through the evidence we have found on this outer god of the death birds, it also seemed to use the life force of the lands between, just like the greater will does with the earth tree. Now, there could also be a connection between the outer god of death and of those who live in death as the deathbirds show up at graveyards where the undead also rise. However, as the death of Godwin the Golden led to the creation of those who live in death through corruption of the earth tree, it's possible that these are two separate aspects of death. It could also be that the deathbirds in the dead of night wander these areas where those who live in death appear, all in order to rake their souls for their master. Maybe so the god of death could rise in power once again.